Today, the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra is rehearsing Siegfried, the third opus in Wagner's epic ring cycle. Sir Simon Rattle stands before them, wielding his baton as a silent but central piece. Change the conductor, and the same orchestra would produce a totally different sound. The art of conducting music is a captivating craft, bridging the gap between the musicians and the audience, and allowing timeless compositions to come to life. But what exactly is the conductor's role in this symphony of sound? How do they harness the music and direct its flow? Scholars have sought to unlock these secrets by studying the conductor's hand gestures. The conventional wisdom states that the right hand marks the beat, and the left hand conveys expressiveness. But the reality of great performance is far more intricate. The adjustments between the conductor and the orchestra are neither a one-way channel nor mirror the regularity of a metronome. They are dynamically negotiated through time, with variants making each performance unique. Each rehearsal is a step in an evolving conversation. Okay, so, Act 3. Many of you know this, but there's Act 1 and Act 2, and then he stopped and wrote Tristan and Isolde. And so this is like a, a nuclear explosion after Tristan and Isolde suddenly. I mean, I mean, the first act is wild, but this is just something else entirely. Have fun. Today, we have a new tool to help us delve even deeper into the art of conducting. A revolutionary pair of glasses worn by Simon Rattle himself. These glasses have a small camera mounted on the frame, offering us a nearly perfect view of the conductor's perspective. But what sets these glasses apart are the two nano cameras tucked within the frame, tracking the movement of Sir Simon's pupils with unerring precision. The nano cameras reveal not only the direction of the conductor's gaze, but also the exact point of his focus. Combining this state-of-the-art optic technology with machine learning techniques from data science, we can now determine quantitatively where his eyes rest and for how long, and also the speed at which his gaze moves towards the next goal, the ballistic eye movements known as saccades. Each number here is a different fixation point shaping what the conductor consciously sees. Meanwhile, the saccades reveal the unconscious thoughts that drive his artistic vision. The conductor's baton and hands form a common ground between the musicians and, to be effective, they must be within the realm of consciousness. The conductor's gaze operates at a much faster, but also more flexible speed during the performance. Observing the difference in tempo during a rehearsal break and the symphony itself, we can see the fluidity of the conductor's gaze as it shifts ahead of the ebb and flow of the music. The strategic gaze of elite footballers and Formula One drivers gives them a decisive advantage on the field and racing track allowing them to anticipate the next winning move with a mere fraction of a second head start. We can see here for the first time that the same holds true for conductors, whose eyes can summon forth the music from the minds of musicians, even when they are positioned at opposite ends of the orchestra. But there's a crucial difference between Simon Rattle and sports stars like Cristiano Ronaldo or Sarah Fisher. While an athlete's gaze helps plan their own movements, the conductor's gaze must also inspire actions within their ensemble. Split-second shifts give the conductor and musicians a chance to anticipate the next move, but on a much larger, integrally collective scale. This degree of coordination is only possible through expert level anticipation. It is also shaped by the interpretation of the score. The eyes of a conductor are not just linearly reading notes on the page. They are scanning the entire musical structure horizontally and vertically to refresh the memory of the piece. 
The eye navigates between the overall picture of the opera that the conductor has in mind and of the music that flows through the hands of more than 100 musicians. What's remarkable is that this visual navigation is faster than the music being played, faster even than the hand gestures being prepared. Through eye tracking technology, we can see that the conductor's gaze dynamically moves across entire physical and mental spaces, enabling the ensemble to bring the music to life. Thanks to this revolutionary medium, we are no longer limited to experiencing performance art through the lens of the audience, the musicians, or even the conductor's own eyes. We can now journey into the very mind of Sir Simon, experiencing the music just as it is about to jump from the score into the real world. <laughs>